I got Brian here, one of our senior engineers. Of course, myself, Alan, who is the uh, lead developer here for the meetup. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, joysticks, and uh, of course, that goes hand in hand a little bit with Fire TV um, and other devices that we do support. So, if you guys want to hold your questions for the end, I'll do a whole round of questions. Uh, it shouldn't take more about 30 minutes to get through the slides. All right, let's get on started. So what is a joystick or gamepad? Really, when it boils down to it, it's a collection of analog uh, devices that are collected together on some piece of plastic. So as you see there, there's a Logitech. I've got another one here, which I can't see very well. But uh, all these devices and all these buttons on here are all technically analog. Um, they all have max values. But the way you can separate the bigger analogs from the digital ones is the digital tab on the max value one zero. So if you want to really boil it down, it's a collection of analog and digital buttons talking over some medium. So modern joysticks. No longer are we in the days of serial joysticks. We're in USB and Bluetooth, which all fall into the HID category, which is human interface device. This is a standard that came, that came up with around the time USB uh, to make it easier for these devices to communicate with computers. So you no longer had to know what bits to read over the serial device. You could just use the standard and uh, immediately know uh, what the device was, what the values were, and how it was going to react. Um, the HID uh, usually comes from, you know, something connected from the USB or Bluetooth. Um, in this case, in joysticks, they all mainly do that. There's not really many that come over to the root protocol. Um, and all of them have a unique ID and product ID, which they get from the USB standard board. Um, you can theoretically make joysticks without them, but you're not supposed to. Uh, but all joysticks have a registered vendor ID and product ID, which uniquely identifies them uh, from other ones. Um, and like I said, they're made up of what's called elements. So an analog stick here is an element. The D-pad is an element. Um, and these have min-max values and usage pages uh, and usages to help you identify what they're supposed to do. So modern joystick APIs, things, <coughs> pardon me, things like uh, direct input, uh, Android has one, which I haven't found a name for, uh, Apple game controller classes. What these do is they abstract away uh, the hid layer so that programmers don't have to deal with the nitty gritty of aspects of, well, what is this device? Oh, I see it's got a value of one zero. Maybe it's a button or maybe it's a D-pad. They abstract that away so you don't have to necessarily directly deal with the hid layer. You can talk in buttons and joysticks and analog sticks, similar like you would in direct input. You'd say, I want to know what the analog, I want to know what the x-axis is doing right now, not what is device 35 doing uh, currently. And they also help with mapping. You know, uh, if you're just looking at HID, you may not, <laughs> you may not know that this, you know, is the X button. It's very likely this comes back as button 20 something or, or, you know, whatever you, you have. They don't actually have unique IDs on these. You kind of have to make up your own IDs for them. Uh, but these modern joystick APIs like direct input solve that problem by mapping them for you and helping you uh, deal with that kind of situation. So what are the problems with dealing with joysticks? Why do people not have joysticks in all their games? Um, I, I really started looking into this problem when I was trying to play uh, Rayman with my daughter and finding that a lot of third-party joysticks just didn't work. Um, <clears throat> some of the problems are the usage tables. They're not required to make the usage tables make sense. Actually, there are several controllers like the PS3 who have a bunch of controls that have the same usage page and table. And so there's no real easy way to distinguish what this control does or this element does versus this element. Uh, all the APIs are completely platform dependent. Um, Apple's all written in Objective-C. Uh, their older ones are written in C. Android is written in Java primarily. Um, you know, Microsoft's are all going to be in C, maybe some C-sharp. So you have to deal with a lot of really hard uh, dependency issues and language issues to, to uh, put joysticks in your game, especially if you have a cross-platform game. Uh, the dead zones on analog sticks are horrendously to deal with. Uh, <coughs> some joysticks have really really good zeroing values, like you leave them alone, and dead zone turns to the, the space that you have to move before you actually get value. Uh, a lot of joysticks uh, don't have, some of them don't have any dead zones, they just wildly spit out values wherever the analog stick lands. Some of them, a lot of them don't have uh, rest values in the center. You'd think <laughs> between this value and this value, the middle would be where they rest. That's not always the case. The Xbox is a great example. The Xbox controller actually, when you let go, does not go back to the center where it normally rests. So every time you let go of it, it's a little bit different. And these are all uh, per joystick, so you have to con you have to kind of 
either come up with universal systems to make your dead zones or you have to do a preferred joystick. Um, some drivers help you and some joysticks have built in dead zones, but it's not always a standard and it's not required. And there's many ones like the Sony PS3 controller or there or have no dead zones at all. Um, and other game paths can pretend to be other ones. Uh, a great example is Logitech's 310 joystick. There's a switch on the back that switches it from X input to direct input mode. And how they dealt with that is they just take the joystick pretend mm -hmm. like it was an old uh, dual action controller. And uh, in that case, it looks like the dual action joystick identically when you look at it. So you may have some situations like that. Sometimes people rewrite them in the drivers. A lot of times you'll see like on, on uh, Mac, the Xbox One uh, driver actually pretends and rewrites the Xbox One controller to pretend to be a 360 controller. Um, I've also seen things on uh, Windows where they'll rewrite the PlayStation Sony controllers to be uh, uh, Xbox controllers so that they'll fall into the XX APIs. Um, and uh, some elements pretend to be other types of elements. The greatest example is this hat stick. And I don't know if you can see it very well. I'll try to move the camera. I mean, not very well. Okay. So you'll find a lot of eight way D pads are not actually eight buttons. They're actually what's called a hat stick. If you ever had a joystick that's a little thumb on the top, that's called a hat stick. And what it is is it's a, a button or a device that has eight directions and one being the rest. So it doesn't actually function like four buttons. It actually functions like eight uh, inputs with one rest value. So they don't function how you normally think buttons should function. And that becomes problematic too because the Xbox controller's D-pad does actually function like four buttons. So if you have, you have to have code that deals with both kinds of D-pads. And this doesn't actually, there is actually in usage tables for D-pad, um, but this doesn't report itself as a D-pad because it can't. Uh, because game pads don't technically have hat sticks. Uh, and so the other problem you have is this game pad here, this dual action, doesn't actually uh, register itself as a game pad. It actually registers itself as a joystick because it has a hat stick on it. So game solid, we made, took care of all these problems and made it so working with games, joysticks and game pads is a dream. How do we do this? Well, we've added some new device attributes. You'll see here, and uh, there's a bunch of player attributes now. Uh, we support up to eight players. They all have different, uh, all, all the, uh, as you, as joysticks join, they get assigned to players. And you see under the player attributes, we have joystick attributes, and they give you information about what the joystick is. Um, they have the name, the vendor ID and product ID, which I mentioned in the other slide, does only helps on the Mac. Uh, unfortunately, Android decides they wouldn't give that information up until KitKat, and so I haven't put in the code yet to deal with the KitKat issue. Um, and joysticks can have the following elements. You can have a D-pad. We support four-way D-pad, up, down, left, right. Uh, I should mention these are all, all these are uh, Booleans. We take care of the problem where if this shows up and this shows up to you, these are both four-button D-pads. You don't have to deal with this crazy analog stick uh, D-pad. A, B, uh, X, and Y is pretty standard. Your standard, you know, Microsoft uh, Xbox control buttons. Um, start select. Not all controllers and gamepads have a select button. Uh, like Android, for example, <coughs> pardon me, a lot of them use a, it's like as a back button. Um, but I have seen Android controllers like the Logitech, I mean the uh, SteelSeries 3, which actually has it as one, two. Um, L3 and R3, which are the thumbsticks when you click, when you click on these. And then uh, also the um, R2s and L2s up here, you know, the top ones. And not all of them have R2s. A lot of controllers um, will either have the triggers, the analog triggers, like the Xbox does, or the PlayStation 4, or they'll have actual um, buttons, just like the uh, PlayStation 2 does. And then he says here, left stick, right stick, right, you know, your standard analog sticks, and then your triggers, which are analog sticks. Uh, the name up there as well, uh, we give you the name of the joystick. That may differ on the Mac. I kind of make the names more human readable. Um, you'll get weird things like, I think the Xbox 360 controller shows up as Microsoft's uh, wireless controller or something like that, some craziness. And the PlayStation 4 one shows up as PlayStation at copyright board. They just show us really weird names. So I try to make them as more human readable. So we go through the attributes again. Here we got the connected, which clearly tells you whether or not the joystick is connected uh, to the device you have. The name of the joystick, the vendor ID, which is the hid vendor ID, which uh, unfortunately you can't actually look up. Um, they don't actually access to it in the USB standard. 
um, and the product ID. But these will help you if you need to, for example, if you have something where you really want to do something special with like the Xbox controller, you can say, if the vendor ID is this and that, then I know it's the Xbox controller, I want to do something special with it. Uh, D-pads are always four-way. We don't support eight-way D-pads. Um, you'll find that we, we, the, the A-way, basically, if you push up in the diagonal, it's going to be up. Um, we use four pushing two at the same time. So that's how you get around. If you have a 40 D-pad, you want to know if I push kind of up in the diagonal, it's going to be uh, right and left or left and, left and up uh, for that. Uh, down is true. Up is false. Uh, and again, not all joysticks have select. Uh, L2 and R2 are triggers. So analog elements, again, the dead zone we make sure is zero for you. You do not have to worry about the dead zone. We auto calibrate all the joysticks. Uh, if you find you plug in and the calibration is wrong, just unplug it, let go of the, joy let go of the joystick, plug it back in, and it'll recalibrate automatically. So zero is guaranteed to be the center. Uh, analog sticks go from negative one to positive one, where negative one is up and left, and um, positive one is down and right. And on the triggers, the analog triggers, uh, one is pressed and negative one is released. So there's a few new game attributes as well to help you out on this. Uh, there's key mappings and player types. Uh, the key mappings will allow you to map uh, any button <coughs> from a player to uh, a keyboard. So if you have your game already set for keyboard logic, you can just go in here and enter in the keys uh, that you want to assign to the gamepad, and we'll throw the key event for you. This way, if you, you don't have to go back and retrofit your game hard. I mean, it makes retrofitting games really, really easy. You just got to fill the information with your keys, and you're good to go. Uh, single player and multiplayer types. So if you have it set to single player, all the controllers that are plugged in will funnel their input through player one. And the idea here is it's a single player game. The game user has two or three pl joysticks plugged in. He's supposed to pick up any joystick and go. Um, on multiplayer, it's going to be a first come, first serve. So if I plug in one controller, it's player one, I plug in another one, it's player two, et cetera, all the way to eight, and the ninth one will just fall off. It won't be actually connected to anything. So a couple other things about the Fire TV remote and the Fire TV itself. So we support both the gamepad and the remote. Um, the gamepad is the actual controller. It's a similar thing like this. Um, the remote is, you know, so they're here to demonstrate. Um, there are two options in publishing to help you with this. Um, the, uh, there's the support Fire TV remote. So if you don't want to support the Fire TV remote, you can unclick uh, the Fire TV remote that, and it will never show up in the player. And the back button quits the app. Um, Fire, uh, the Kindle store doesn't allow you to have the back button quit the app. So uh, if you have it um, selected that you want the back button to quit, that won't work in the store. So you can unselect that so that your back button doesn't actually quit your app. Um, and also we demote the uh, remote, and the thought is that if you connect a gamepad controller, if there's a player two has the Fire T remote, you connect the gamepad controller, we assume you want to use the gamepad controller and not the remote. So the remote will just completely get demoted down the player list until it falls off. Um, and the menu button you see here is uh, the start button for it. And uh, this is up, down, oh, you can't see that. Uh, the start button here is the menu. The three little blinds is the uh, start button on Android. This will work on Fire TV or Android. Um, the uh, <coughs> The D-pad there, which is the circle ring you see, um, holding it vertically up is the top, upward, down, left, right, and the center is A. Um, so here are all the supported controllers, we, all the controllers we support on uh, Mac, which is quite a lot. We try to pick all the really popular ones that everyone would ideally want. Um, and um, there are quite plenty of them. I'll let you know the Xbox ones, you will need a third party driver for it that does not work out of the box. Um, the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, 4 all work fine on the box. All the series, all those work right out of the box. On Android, you can use any supported Android controller. Um, Android does allow you to plug in non-designed Android controllers, and they map them to wherever they want. We found some of them don't map quite right, so you're going to have to kind of test if you don't use an Android, a joystick design for Android. Um, but almost any any Android design controller will work on any Android device or the Fire TV. So a couple things to watch out for. Um, do not use the button to change scene. Why is this? Because remember, when you're holding down the buttons, and we, if we reevaluate your behaviors, that button is going to be reevaluated probably at the same state, because the hum, human and joystick cannot release the button fast enough before our logic reevaluates. So we want to watch the value of the button 
and uh, keep track of that. So if you see it down, then you set some attributes to change scene, but you set it to false before you change the scene. So when you go to the next scene, you're not going to try to change again. Um, to do Android, it requires Android 4.1. Joysticks were not supported before Android 4.1. Uh, key mappings are not automatic. So we go back to the key mapping slide. We don't fill this information in for you. What you need to do is go in here and you see the blank spots here where the lines are. You click there twice, it's a text box, and you're in the same text that you would from a key event. So, like, if you want the up arrow, it would be up, the word up. Some things when you switch to the Fire TV store. The Fire TV store, uh, you need to make sure you don't have UI buttons on the screen uh, if they can't be highlighted or selected. So, um, just having a pause button, even though you have start as pause, yeah, they'll reject you for that. Uh, you need some type of highlight around the buttons to show that you're selected that one. Um, there's a whole bunch of rules. I'm not going to go into all the rules, um, but there's a link down there if you want to go read through their rules um, and guidelines for what to submit. So that's about it for my presentation. I'll go ahead and field questions. Just go ahead and type them out, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have on joystick or Fire TV or whatnot. No questions? Anybody? You raise your hand too if you want. If you have an audio question, you can feel free to raise your hand. There we go. Yeah, so Amazon ads. We don't support the Amazon ads yet. Um, I think there might be a feature request into that when we were thinking about that. Um, unfortunately, after I put in all this stuff, I found out the Amazon Fire TV doesn't support, doesn't have a web browser. And um, Charboost RevMob require a web browser to move you to the store. Um, so unfortunately, all the ad fires we have don't work on the Fire TV. Um, if you guys really want Amazon ads, um, I recommend feature request and go vote. Oh, sorry, let me down here. We've got another question here. Uh, when publishing for Fire TV, which target do we choose? Okay, so there are three targets depending on what you can see. The Fire TV target is for the promotion, is uh, accessible by pro and free users. It will only run on the Fire TV. The Kindle target will run on all Kindle devices and the Fire TV. Um, so if you want to mainly target that platform, that's a good target to go with. Um, or the Android one will work as well, uh, but you need to make sure you don't have the back button quitting the app. Uh, you probably want to use Game Circle or um, Amazon Fire TV or, or Amazon um, in-app purchase, uh, and it'll work fine. The Android one will run on everything. Well, turning on multiplayer effect performance, it should not know. Um, you're just going to get uh, more joysticks talking, um, but no, it should have effect performance. Yeah, I should say one thing. Uh, we cache the inputs but we've already verified that there's no physical way for you to push the button twice in the same frame. I think it's, uh, we're on 60 frames per second, Brian, or 30? 30, so we're what, 0.33 milliseconds? Uh, yeah. So yeah, so if you can somehow magically <laughs> push a button faster than 0.33 milliseconds, you might get two buttons a frame, but I don't think anybody human possibly can do that. So Brian and I tested, we tested tons of spamming, and there was no way we could get two button presses at the same time on the same, on the same element. Um, I was being distracted, so I missed it. How, uh, but how would you reference the button on a Fire TV? Okay, so yeah, I'll go through a little examples. Uh, let me go grab the Fire TV remote real quick. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to hold this up here. I want to see if everybody can see this, and I'll walk over here so maybe everybody can see it. All right, so here it is, and I can't fully block myself. All right. Uh, take two. All right. There's the Fire TV remote. And we'll go back to the slide so we can actually see it in better because that's still a terrible thing to see. Okay. So the Fire TV remote is vertical. The, uh, the circle ring here is up, down, left, and right for D-pad. The center button is the A button. And the three lines here is the start button. And so you just access them like you normally would in any game pad. You play the, if you wanted to find out where, if the center button was pressed, it'd be player um, devices, player one, um, or whatever player you want to, to, to look at this for, um, player one dot A button, and that would tell you when off the center button was pressed. And the ring is just a D pad. Uh, how multiplayer work on Fire TV? Just like every other multiplayer work on every device. It's got networking, and you can easily do it. Yep, just like a standard Android device. So you would uh, use the network feature to call out to your uh, server and populate whatever data you have, or if you can play it together, uh, that'll work as well. It's the same way as well. So ideally, you could have um, you know two people playing multiplayer on one um, device on the Fire TV, and like another two people playing another device. That's like a board game or something like that going. 
or, or something like that. Um, Jonathan talked about doing like an eight-player board game or something like that. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll work fine. Any other questions people have? Uh, no, it is not. All right, so I'm sorry. Scott asked, does the uh, build use HTML5 or Android? It uses Android. It is completely a native engine. No HTML5. Uh, access to other controls. Uh, yeah, so uh, Robert asked, uh, can you access other controls in remote? Right now, I don't have the rest of them mapped. Um, there is nothing stopping us from doing that. Uh, we just didn't know whether you guys want that or not. Um, I can completely map if you guys want the, the media remotes on here. Um, I'm not quite sure what buttons we'd want, maybe X, Y. Um, but just put a feature request in for what buttons you want mapped to what, and we can easily do that. But right now, you only have access to the uh, D-pad on the remote, uh, the start button, the A button, which is the center button here, and then uh, on the, this remote here, which is the, the um, Amazon uh, Fire remote, you have access to all the buttons except for the uh, back button, home button, the um, game circle button you don't have access to, and these bottom buttons. But all the rest, the triggers, the, uh, you know, the L2, LRV clicks, all that you have access to on the, on the gamepad. IAT support. Uh, I, sorry, um, Scott asked about IAT support on the Fire TV. Yes, Amazon's IAT service will work. Uh, Google's will not. You need to use Amazon's IAT service. It'll work fine on the Fire TV. So will Game Circle. The Airborne achievements were fantastic on the Fire TV uh, using Game Circle. Will Game Sell, Scott asked, will Game Seller support wearables like Apple Watch or Pebble? Um, we, I, I have looked at the Apple Watch API, and right now it, does, it doesn't do anything for us. We can't even run OpenGL on it. Um, so we're going to have to do a wait and see on Apple's watch. I haven't looked exactly into the Pebble stuff, but most of the watches <coughs> and wearable stuff isn't designed to run games. Games take a lot of power, and they take a lot of CPU and processing, and most of the wearable devices don't have the power to barely run any type of game. Um, we can definitely look at some of the SDKs for, for Android, but as far as I can tell what I've seen, most of them are for notifications and things like that. Um, I'm not opposed to people who have ideas, but you're going to have to give realistic ideas because most of the time when we have we talk the Apple Watch discussion, it's about well, I want to run this game on it, and that's just not possible. Like the watch is just not going to let you do that because you're going to drain your poor user's uh, battery before you can get through like level one. But if you guys have ideas, um, I'm up to up, you know, I'm up to doing features if if the community feels there's a feature, um, and I suggest using the feature request system for that. And I already suggest, yeah, Scott, I already talking about Android Wear, yeah. And again, Android's got a lot of stuff. I haven't looked fully into Android Wear's uh, stuff, because um, most of the things I've seen are not even close to the Apple Watch power. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have some ideas, I'd say put a feature request in. That would be the best way to go about that. Uh, is there any difference between the Fire TV and Fire TV State? Yes, there is, but not ones you're going to probably notice. Let me go pull it up. Um, Um, so if you haven't been here, this is Amazon's uh, Fire TV developer site. It's kind of handy to poke through and whatnot. Um, let's see if I can find the part. They differ in hardware performance. Here we go. So here's the uh, lovely link here. Uh, it's this horrible, horrible link. Um, I'll post this as the answer to your question here so you can get that link. If I can get down here do that. One second, I'll just post that link down for you. Okay, now I can see the questions over here. Okay. Fire Steam Entire TV. Uh, you want to go here. And that will give you a list of the spec. Most of them are just uh, performance issues. You'll see that they all have the same resolution. Pixel density is pretty similar. Storage is the same. You'll notice that the RAM is a little different. We're going to get 512 RAM on the stick versus 2 gigs. The uh, uh, <coughs> CPU is not powerful. 
You'll notice the CPU on the Fire TV is actually really powerful. It's like a quad core CPU. It's really powerful. But the stick has only got a dual core 1 gigahertz. Um, GPUs differ a little bit. So uh, there's no, uh, the remote doesn't have this thing on it. But uh, so from your standpoint, you're probably just going to see a difference of performance wise because the Fire TV is, uh, the actual box is, is more powerful than the stick. Um, but they support the same controller setup. So controller wise, you won't see any difference. And they should support both of both in the and effort in the uh, game circle. Any other questions you guys have about the Fire TV or, or sticks or anything else I can answer? Uh, okay, Scott's asking, will you ever support plugins or third-party code? So you guys don't have to make everything and have other people. So Game of Solid's engine itself does not really work well with plugins. There's no plugin architecture, and it would be quite a task and also very difficult for you guys to develop plugins for it. It's not an easy code base to deal with. Graphene is a much better place for plugins, and that's where we're going to do plugins. Uh, if you guys want to write plugins, graphene is where you're going to be able to do it. So I have no, I have no uh, intent on ever um, putting plugins in the game style. I just don't think it's the place to do it, and I think graphene is a far better platform for it. Uh, and same thing, um, I have my usual question regarding for yourself. Can you be more specific, Ed Castle, about your question about creator? I don't. Remember all the questions necessarily. Regarding the yes, I all right. So the current so Ed's asking about the current slowness for Crater. I literally have been working the last three days on switching Crater over to a more performance uh, system. We're going to switch over to what's called uh, Apple Arc system. It's called Automatic Reference Counting. It will get rid of the garbage collector, which is causing all the performance problems. Uh, I've got it almost. I've got it running. It still has some uh, crashes, so I haven't put it out yet. Um, but you do not see the beach ball problems anymore. Our takes care of all of them. So yes, I am currently every day working on that to make your guys better. As soon as I get it stable, it will come out to you guys. Um, probably in the 14th early. Um, because I don't think it's going to be very easy to backport that to 12 or to 13. Um, so yes, 14, we will fix all those performance problems. I am working on it right now. I promise you. Every day, I am working on it. Uh, I'm going to put up with some crashes. No, you probably don't want to deal with these crashes. Like, literally, you double-click a character, and it crashes. Like, you get three steps in, and it crashes. I'm talking, like, horrific crashes here. Hopefully, I'll have them cleaned up soon. Uh, like I said, as soon as I can get it stable enough where I feel like you could actually do something in it, I will put it out as an nightly build. I promise you guys. Top priority. That's all I'm working on right now is fixing that performance issue. Uh, the, and also, yeah, and then uh, Robert's asking, will the um, required be a 70? No. Line and higher, just like it's always been. Okay, so Scott's asked about Windows Phone. So I haven't looked at Windows Phone in a while. The last time I looked up, um, and I actually looked this up a few days ago. Let me go pull up it so you guys can see. I actually, um, let me stop sharing my screen real quick while I go look this up for you guys. Um, bah, 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 bah. I literally was looking at the stats of the market share of mobile devices. Mm-hmm. Here we go. <clears throat> as soon as it shows my screen. All right. So I literally looked this up about three days ago. And uh, that other 4.6 is uh, Windows Phone and BlackBerry and um, um, I can't remember. Nokia's old OS. So it's 4.6 of the market, and it's only 3% of the world. So it has a small market share. Um, so right now we have no plans. Uh, again, if you guys really want that, you can always are welcome to put a feature request in. If that's a top voted feature, we'll look into it. Uh, you're very welcome, Ed. I, I just said thank you. Um, any other questions I can answer for you? And also, Windows Phone, if we ever did support it, it would be Windows Phone 8 or higher. Windows Phone 7 doesn't have C++ support. Uh, will graphene support plugins in the visual editor like plugins in the particle and the plugins? Let me read that again. Scott's asking, will graphene support plugins in the visual editor like plugging in a particle plugin and moving around the visual editor? I don't know yet. We're still figuring that ourselves. Um, ideally, I would like to support <laughs> full plugins, but it's a lot of work, and uh, I don't know yet. I, honestly, we're still talking about it. Ideally, we'd like to, but I have no ETA plans or know when that feature will actually be put in or if. So 
Uh, you're just going to have to stay tuned to it, Scott, and keep badgering us until I actually have an answer for you. Sorry, I know it's no answer, but it's the best I got. Um, I know we're going to work on engine plugins, so I know that's coming, but uh, um, Code Wizard and I um, have been going back and forth about whether or not we should do, when we should do them, if we should do them, because there's some issues with how, how you would interface with them and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I think it's a nice feature, but again, it's, we have we have so much for making a whole new system from scratch, it's kind of falling on the back burner. But just keep adding this, and I have an answer, a better answer for you, I'll give you one. Uh, do you think 3D can be done as easily as 2D in game salad? Hmm. What do you think, Brian McWay, in that you're a 3D programmer and graphics extraordinaire? 3D adds a lot of complicated math to the system. Basically, we we are planning on in graphene uh, to allow the importing of 3D objects eventually. Probably not with the first version of when it goes out, um, but we'll write a plugin that allows you to do that. And what the plugin will do is essentially render a 3D object in a 2D plane with all the lighting and normal mapping and specular highlights and everything. Um, as if it was a 2D object. So it'll, it'll look all 2D um, because there'll be a fixed camera, um, but uh, they'll definitely be 3D objects with anim uh, 3D animation and, and everything that that supports. Getting that into Game Salad would be extremely difficult. So yeah, Game Salad has no yeah Game Salad has no content that kind of stuff, and yeah, the code base is much harder to deal with. <laughs> I think it comes down to what your camera is and how you want to control your camera in a 2D world. The graphene and game salad are. Um, you you have a fixed perspective on on your 3D art, but we can definitely. Uh, it'll take a lot of work to get the animation working, because that that's the biggest piece in 3D. Um, so theoretically, technically, theoretically, if you brought a 3D engine as a plugin in and had it right yeah, out in texture, could, then you could, could do it. theoretically do it in graphics. Yeah, yeah, it definitely could do it. Um, but I'll put it this way. We like to learn, as, a, as you know, you saw, we like to master 2D first before we even start talking about 3D. You know, we need to walk before we can run. So we want to provide you the best 2D experience first before we even talk about 3D. Any other questions I can answer for you guys? Oh, more of them. Uh, I've, heard Ma um, I've heard Mac, but I hear Windows has not had an update in a while. Any plans? Yes. Steve Jakob, who you've seen on the forums at Steve J, literally switched back to Windows yesterday and is currently polishing up the Windows build so that we can get it out. We're going to put it out to 14. The idea is that the next release, which is 0.14, will come out as Mac and Windows and be fully compatible between the two. Um, if everything goes well and do not hold me to this date, because I will tell you the date is probably not going to happen. But ideally, we'd like to have it out somewhere in April, March. In, in March, someplace be in April. Don't hold me to that. It's going to be a tight fix if we get there. So. For, for a rough estimate, say like two months or more. But the idea is that 14, they'll both come out, and Windows guys, you will have full access to all the features, including joysticks, on uh, your platform. Um, we'd like to get out built soon here in the next week or two to allow you guys to get a little preview of it and also give you access to Fire TV. So if you're on Windows, you'll be able to actually uh, build Fire TV apps. Um, and we're just dealing with some very terrible, terrible crashes right now. And uh, <laughs> We also just got, <coughs> pardon me, the nightly build rebuilding. Uh, has been so focused on Fire TV, we've kind of let the code kind of sit there. Um, but Steve is very hardly, very working very diligent to get you guys a good Windows build out. So hopefully very soon you guys will have a great Windows build. Because, uh, yeah, it's been, way, it's been way, way too long since we had a good Windows build out. All right. Uh, are there any plans to implement push notification in game solid with multiplayer particularly in mind as async is more useful with push notifications and asking this. Um, so yeah, um, there's stuff in place together that allows you push notifications. Um, we just haven't had a chance to really focus on that and it hasn't really been a big feature from the users. Uh, we have a feature request system, right, and you guys didn't vote that up as one of the top features. So to us, that doesn't seem like you could find that important. Uh, if you feel that's really important, maybe we've misjudged that. You guys should get together and vote for those features and vote them up. Um, if that becomes like one of the top ones, then I'll be happy to put it in. Um, it's a little tricky because all the different platforms have their own push notification, um, but I'm not opposed to it. 
Uh, any info coming about graphics? CoWizard has not released any information on the 48 days. Oh, graphing, I'm sorry. Any information on graphing? Uh, honestly, I actually haven't looked at graphing in a couple weeks because I've been so focused on uh, Fire TV and the performance issues in, in Game Salad. Um, I know they're working hard on it, and they've been doing a bunch of good alpha testing on it, and I can't. I actually don't know the release date. Uh, he and I talk about it a lot, and we still don't have a good release date. It's hard. Like, you know, it's like going to Microsoft and asking them, hey, why don't you rebuild Word, and then let us know when it's coming out. And they'll be like, we'll let you know when it gets close. You know, because, you know, look at Windows 10, right? Windows 10, they don't tell you necessarily. Windows 10 took, what, maybe six months to a year for them to put that out? This largest software, it's just hard to nail down a date. Um, and all I can say is just keep on looking at the forums, and if you can get into the alpha program, that's great. You can get the, the actual alpha builds. Um, but I don't know, I can maybe answer some specifics if I know them, but there's a lot of things that are still being discussed and the the build is still being you know finalized and there's still features need to be put in. So I don't know exactly necessarily what you're looking for, but uh, they're still working on it hard. Um, perhaps a sticky on the forums list of current feature requests that people know where they are. Ah, I got that for you. We have a place. Bugs.gamesalad.com has a list of all the top features right there for you to look at. Here are the top feature requests. I will post that in your, your thing here so you can find it. You go there, there are the top creator feature requests, and there are the top engine feature requests. And then also the publishing ones. Uh, well, I just kind of merge creator and engine together because sometimes those overlap. What you see, number one, polygon collision support, video ads. Custom fonts. Uh, this one here I'm kind of just putting as a bug. Yeah, I know you guys want that and I'm working on it daily. I'll probably move that over to a bug and just give you guys updates on that. Um, Android expansion files, joints, sound behavior. So you can see um, there are a lot of other features people want before push notifications. If you feel you really want to push notification, then by all means, you know, start a campaign and vote it up. Pretty much what I've been doing is uh, after I think it's 14. We're just going to go straight down this list. And we've actually already implemented some of the features on here. Um, if you notice, um, I always get the name of this wrong. AdMob. AdMob it is no longer on here because we got it in. It's in the nightly build. The next nightly build will have AdMob in it. AdMob in it with banner ads for Android. Um, AdMob support for iOS and Android. And I think I think AdMob supports the interstitial grade too. So we got the whole spread. You guys voted for it and we did it. So that's where you should go to uh, see what the current feature requests are. Uh, yeah, I, all right, so uh, Francis asked, uh, when will there be template tutorials on implementing joysticks for our game? Yes, Jonathan has some, <coughs> and we <laughs> meant to release them, pardon me, we meant to release them with the last build, but unfortunately he got backlogged and wasn't able to complete all of them. So let me talk to him tomorrow and see if I can get them linked in here, and we'll release the insect uh, intruders with joystick support and whatever other ones he has are already done. Um, if I forget, just test me on the forums. But uh, yeah, we'll release some of those tomorrow. Um, also, there's a great uh, cookbook um, place for you guys to go if you need, uh, like, you want know, really good, like how, I want to know, like, step by step. I saw this presentation, it was great, but I want to actually see it in words. Um, this is the official cookbook documentation <coughs> for controllers and <coughs> support. Support, pardon me. Um, list out everything here and how to do it and all the controller support uh, and it's got nice pictures. So if you have if you have questions after this that I can answer, there's a great place to go as well. Um, and I'll try to make sure we get some um, templates up somewhere. Eventually they will just be in the crater itself, um, but I haven't had a chance to do that. <laughs> will graphing come out? So Scott Basket will come out in 2015. Honestly, I don't even know, dude. I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, right, should, uh, yeah, Scott, I honestly do not have an answer for that. I, I personally don't know. Code Wizards know. Um, it's on a month-by-month -month basis, and we're trying to evaluate when it's going to come out. Yeah, that's, that's how hard it is. It's, you know, we're building a very large code base with very many moving parts, and trying to nail that exact time down is just not good enough. We don't have any idea. It's like looking at Magic 8 Ball. I could just throw out wild numbers to you, but they're probably not going to be right. So even if I had some ballpark, it's probably going to be wrong. Um, so honestly, we, we don't know. Um, I would love to give you the answer if I knew, but I do not know the answer to that. Um, Polygon Explosion is important 15. Yes, that is when it's planned to be put out. Polygon Explosion is planned, I believe, 15 or maybe it's 16. Uh, let me think. Zero, 50 or 16. 
I think it's 16. Because I think we have a few things on Windows Creator that need to be strained up on 15. Um, once I get 14 out, you'll know. It's either 15 or 16 I have it scheduled for. Um, let me see real quick if I can find it. I have, I have, a, I have a, I think I have the roadmap. Let me check the roadmap. If it's on the public roadmap, I'll go look it up real quick. Ah, okay, 16. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's 16. Got a couple features um, that are going to come out in 15. We may get, maybe if we get them done fast enough, we can get it out in 16. Um, it'll be 16. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Scott. 16. That's what it's scheduled for. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Robert asks, I'm not sure what the game player versus device player is. Uh, how can I access device players? All right, let me go in and open up game style here and show you. Just give me one second. So I have some, uh, I got a couple of joystick things here. Um, so I'm going to pull up this joystick. This is actually used to test internally uh, with our stuff. QA made this for me. Um, so if we open up a scene here, we go into device attributes. You'll see in devices there's a bunch of players. So these are the actual current values of the joystick. They get set. The game attributes allow you to do things with the key mapping. So if I wanted the up to be space, I can literally type space in here and hitting the, and then hitting the um, up D pad on the controller will cause the space key event to get fired. So if I have an actor, this so I'll a, a blank scene so you guys can see a, a blank actor scene. So if I had a blank actor here and I wanted to say I want to do something when the D-pad is pressed. I would go in here and go to devices, players, player one, if I was doing a single player, and I would say D-pad up. And when that's true, you know, uh, right, and then I could copy that, paste it here, and say D-pad uh, not pressed. change this horribly defaulted color, which at some point I will fix. Right, and I turn this, oops, how do I put the actor in the scene? Oh, I should put the actor in here, make it kind of large so we can see it. Bam. And uh, I want to plug something in, so I'll plug in a controller here. Make it a little bigger for you guys to see. And so then if I push up, but the same way, if I wanted to have it work the key so that I didn't have to actually uh, do it this way, I could also put in a different one, and I could remove this one, and I could say uh, when key up is down. Then I would need to go into the scene, go into the attributes, go to player one mapping, and go to here and put up. And now you see it works the exact same way. I just switched over using keys instead of uh, actually referencing the actual joystick itself. Um, Scott asks, any templates on the networking feature? Which one, Scott, the place together or the one by building yourself? Um, because uh, we have stuff for um, building uh, your own server, which we did on a couple meetups ago. If you go on our YouTube uh, channel for GameSolid Meetup Group, uh, which is in the GameSolid, uh, it's just channel or in the GameSolid YouTube uh, channel page, uh, we have a kick that tic tac toe game with a server code example to do a multiplayer game with your own server. Um, plays, plays together, we don't quite, um, Steve did one uh, on, in February. February he did a talk on plays together and you can watch that one and we think we have the um, uh, template for that as well. So we have two examples. So yes, we do have some. Um, I would go to look at the <coughs> forum post for those two meetups and if you actually want to see in action, uh, go watch the um, meetup video. Uh, Ed asks, can the same key be assigned to multiple buttons? I, if you have one, if if you have one touch game, uh, you can assign the action to every button without lots of conditions. Yes, I think I know what you're saying. Yes, you can do that. 
So for example, if I want oops, an attribute, if I want the down D-pad to also press up, then I can go in here and if I push down or up, they're both going to throw the up. So yes, you can have multiple keys. You can have the same key assigned to the two different buttons. But you can only have one key assigned to one button. We don't support multiple keys for the same button. Uh, okay, both. Yes, yeah, Scott. So uh, I believe we posted <laughs> posted them in the forum thread uh, for those meetups. Um, I'd have to go dig in the forums to find them. But yes, they are out there. Uh, if you can't find them, send me a message on the forums, and I'll help track them down. But yes, we have example code for both. Um, they're more of a, a like a advanced user templates, so not like a, like a really common at well, but yes, we have them, and we could be happy to share them with you. Uh, is full EO support coming? Um, we don't have plans for EO, but if you guys want to put a feature request in and that's the platform you want, we could. Um, the problem with EO is that, you know, its market share is kind of dwindling, um, and they also have some weird things to do with their icons. Um, but the joystick support does work. You can sideload your app onto EO and it works. Um, we're just missing a few pieces to, to some EO stuff. Um, but we aren't going to support it unless you guys put that as a feature request. So uh, we have no short-term goals or plans to do EO support um, unless that's something that comes up the feature list. Um, is Android TV support? Uh, I don't have Android TV, so I haven't tried it yet. I do know one thing that's going to stop you is that the Android Nexus TV, or I think it's called the uh, Google Player TV, actually doesn't run on ARM. It runs on Intel, which is the processor architecture. And our code is only compiled for ARM. So right now, our, code, our games will not run on that. Um, again, if you guys want that as a support platform, put it in as a feature request and vote it up. Uh, Ed's asking, <laughs> how hard would it be to get the ability to put table names in attributes? It's the kind of thing a lot of people will, would use, but not many would vote on. It's not a flashy feature. Table names and attributes. Are you talking about so that you can make a new attribute of type table? I'm a little confused. Can you be a little more specific? Or if you want, I can put you on the speaker here and you can, if you, if you want to talk to me in audio, just raise your hand. I'll, I'll, I'll unmute you and you can ask your question uh, a little more specific. Okay, we'll do that. Let me find you on here. Oh, you got two. Which ad are you? Uh, raise your hand, Ed, so I know which one you are. All right. I'm muting Ed. All right, can you hear us, Ed? Hello? Is the audio up? Here we go. Fill it up. Uh, let me try muting both. Hello, can you hear us? I have you unmuted, though. One of you says you don't have a microphone connected, so you might try unplugging your microphone. You have like two instances of yourself running, and I can't uh, seem to unmute you properly. Yeah, you have one of you doesn't one of your Ed's doesn't have a supported microphone, the other one does. I've got you both unmuted. Let me try let me try muting this one. Is that working? Can you hear me? Or I guess you can hear me, but I still can't hear you. Are you unmuted yet? Okay. So pick which one you want here and I will unmute you. Okay, I have both unmuted. Are you unmuted, Ed? Hmm. Okay, so we can't quite get them muted, so he'll type it in. Okay. Uh, well, Ed's typing. Anybody else have any other questions I can answer for you? Ah. Uh, okay, so Scott asked, and maybe this would be better for the entire meetup group can answer this. Um, just raise your hand if you have a comment on this. Um, so uh, Scott asked, should your paid app have ads in it? What's your guys' opinions? Actually, you know, we can do a poll here. Let's just do a poll. I'm going to make a new poll, and we'll do it this way, if I can figure out how to make a poll in here. Uh, all right. There you go, everybody. Vote away. Let's find out, Scott, what everybody else thinks. Mm. 
I will continue down. Okay. Okay, Alex asking, is the Android sound delay bug going to be fixed in 14? So Android is the worst, horribly worst <laughs> platform to deal with this. We've dealt with this since we've introduced Android. So we have our own sound. We use OpenAL on Android so that we don't have an issue having to have multiple sound libraries. Unfortunately, a lot of these devices have horribly large buffers. And we've tried before to get the sound delay as low as we could. We can take in our staff. You guys want to put a bug in or vote up that bug? Um, I'm not, I don't know the exact, if you have a bug already, I don't know the exact bug number, but we don't have any plans to fix any more audio issues in Android. Um, we, we tried a couple years ago to get as best as we could, um, but these Android devices just do a terrible job with OpenAL, and um, it's really hard to get latency. It's actually a big problem in Android if you do a lot of Google searches on, on Android audio latency. Um, especially like the Kindle and the Nook devices. Um, but I'm okay taking their stab at it if, um, if you think it's a big priority. Um, you can always um, send me the bug number and we'll take another look at it and see if we can have time to squeeze in. Probably when we will squeeze into 14, we're pretty full up on 14, but we might be able to squeeze in at 15 to look at the bugs. Okay, let me read this out here. Yes, Ed. Okay, so Ed's asking if he can change table values based on buttons and it would be easier to have that. So you can kind of do it this way. Maybe this is not how you want to do it. Maybe it'd be easier another way. So you could say, um, where is the table value? It's been lost that on tables in here. Change attribute, change table. Maybe the change, say attribute, save table. Where is the table? I just not find it. Change attribute. I will just do. Um. I should remember how, where the table values are. I'm just not seeing them. Yeah, you could say that here. Uh, you could do, if I can remember where the table stuff is, because my brain is gone today here. Possible table. Yeah, Ed, why don't you start a forum thread on this, and we can talk about this over the on the forum, because I think CodeMonkey might have some ways to help you on that, and uh, I'm not 100% sure why you need different tables. Um, oh, I see. You want to go, oh, I see you want index it. Yeah, why don't we store a, a forum thread on this and we can take it offline and we can discuss it on the, on the forum. Um, I'm not quite sure I'll answer that. I think CodeMonkey might have some, uh, some answers for you on that. Oh, okay. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Let me, do I have a screen share? Um, where? Okay, there we go. Uh, yep, hold on a second. The poll's almost done. Everybody finished voting so I can close the poll. It's only 67 voted. And yes, Ed, I'll show you in a second uh, what I was talking about. Yeah, that's fine. It's a 30 simple project. Put a forum post and we'll talk about it on the forum. Everybody finished voting? It's pretty well skewed, so I'll go ahead and close the poll. Uh, there you go, Scott. So the majority of the people think, no, you should not have ads in your paid game. Um, here's the, my screen again. Um, I have trying problems around with the change table stuff is what I was looking for, but, oh, there it is. This is what I was looking for. Yes, this is what I was like. So in here it would be on button press, change table, and I would do something like probably a search table. Um, as far as the way we had, maybe that's what we're going to add. Find table, text lane, table, search. I can't remember this table. Yeah. I think Steve and I were talking about having a function which you could resolve the table by name. Text, sub, search, table, search, row. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now, Ed. 
Yeah, uh, we we were talking about having uh, like a function that you could just type in the name, and then you could just pass that in, and so you could resolve the table by name. Because we have that code under the hood that already works that way, and we just need to expose it in some way for you guys to be able to do that. So, yeah, just put a feature request in, and we can we can get something out like that. All right, any last more last questions I can answer or help out with? Uh, Scott has are there any pricing changes for game style? A lot of interchange prices. We're still discussing that. I can't uh, I can't talk about any uh, ongoing uh, discussions about price changing. Um, we haven't made anything public about it, and I can't mention anything about it. So no comments on that right now. Um, yes, I agree. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, it's, it's it's weird that we had to actually have a hard code in there. Yeah, let me talk to let me see if we can squeeze it in somewhere. It should be pretty easy. We already have the functionality in there. Uh, but yeah, ideally, I would just like to have as a find table by name, and it's just a function you can stick in there, and you just type a string, which you pass an attribute, you're done. Uh, a suggestion on how to replace touch and fire TV apps. Uh, yeah, it's it's difficult. <laughs> um, Jonathan, our, co our uh, code monkey, went through a lot of this kind of stuff too. Um, so touch might be best replaced by the analog stick because that's probably the closest you have. Now, like on touch a button you're going to have to replace with like on button push, right? But say you have like a, a drag feature where you're dragging the actor around the screen, um, the best for that <laughs> would be using the analog sticks uh, to solve that because they are very similar in nature to that kind of stuff um, and they give you an XY coordinate. So you can kind of map the XY coordinate to the screen and do it that way. So that is what I would recommend for touch if you need to do that uh, would be to map uh, map it to an analog stick. Um, if it's something where you need like only one direction, um, I'm trying to give you an example. Maybe like Fruit Ninja, maybe uh, you can use like the trigger. Fruit Ninja probably works better with the analog stick because you like a swiping motion. Um, but yeah, I would try to take like one of the analog sticks and map that to the screen, and then where they're pushing across the analog stick would be the same thing as they're moving their finger across the screen. That's how I recommend doing that. Uh, Scott, if you're going to WWC, no, I don't think any of us are going to WWC this year, Scott. Um, I will be at South by Southwest. If anybody's South by Southwest, I'll be at the education booth or the education section. So you can come by and say hi. But uh, no plans for WWC this year. Sorry. All right, any more last minute questions or anything else I can answer? Wait a few more minutes to see. Uh, is there any plans to feature third-party sites and resources on game styles and a website? I don't know of any. Uh, you'll have to talk to Dan on that one. Um, I'm not in the loop on uh, that kind of stuff, um, but I don't know of any, Scott. Um, and Robert says, thank you for adding the Fire TV support. They had a lot of fun with it. You're welcome. I hope you guys have a lot of fun with Fire TV stuff. It does feel kind of like a console, right? It kind of feels like you're getting closer to a console type support. And, uh, you know, joysticks really do lend themselves to a lot of great games, like uh, you know, like Mario Brothers and those type of games are, are much more fun to play with them. Uh, as many games you guys made, like Steampunks and whatnot, I'd love to play the joystick and uh, try it out. I have a Fire TV and I'm uh, trying to, if people bring games in to Fire TV, I'm trying to find them and play them, but I haven't had a chance to, to dig through all of them yet. Um, but I have a Fire TV, so I'm quite happy to try some of your games out as, uh, as they come through. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys have on there. Um, also, again, you can also, this works completely on Mac. You can totally publish a Mac game in the Mac App Store, and this will work. So that's another outlet, too, if you want to start your hand and try your hand at uh, desktop gaming on that kind of level. You can make a, uh, a game that works both on the Fire TV and on the Mac. Uh, give some Mac users some love, too. Um, is the Fire TV a good store for developers? It is not crowded. I will tell you, there is probably maybe 50 games in that store. Hey, there are not a lot of games in that store, so getting noticed is not hard. Uh, some big names are coming to the store. Um, they recently released Knights of the Old Republic on Fire TV, which is interesting. Uh, Grand Theft Auto is on there, but there's still a lot of indies, and it's really easy to get noticed. Like, you can easily scroll through a category within about a minute, and you've gone through, like, you know, 10, 20 games. So there are definitely a lot of places to grow in that store. Um, and it's definitely become more popular. We actually had problems getting hold of the gamepad controllers. Like these were sold out on Amazon. Like we had to actually, I actually happened to have one, but we actually had to call Amazon to get ours in time to get the feature out. So clearly the Fire TV is picking up um, popularity. Um, 
for users. So I think it's a good store. Um, I don't have personally a game in there, but everything I've seen, from what I can tell, it looks like it's a, it's a good store and easy uh, to get noticed because it's not saturated. So I highly recommend if you don't have a game in there, go put a game in there. And again, we have that promotion, so if you're thinking about Fire TV, you can go take a look at the promotion and uh, there's some pretty good prizes there as well. <laughs> Got that scandal the weather is. Actually, it's really nice. It was supposed to ice, and it iced in the morning, and then it cleared up in the evening. So, or actually in the morning. By 12, I, I drove here at noon, and there was no, no water on the roads. So we escaped all Dallas's problems. Dallas, on the other hand, is uh, another matter. I think there's still got some snow on the ground. But nothing down here. So, I don't know if there's any pole I have in here. Oh, I got a good pole. I'll add a, I'll add a pole here while we're waiting. Oops, that's all right. Ah, I typed that quickly. Sorry about the grammar in there. All right, so is that pull and show results? So it looks like most of you are planning to publish the Fire TV, which is fantastic. Um, looking forward to playing all those great games. And I got one more poll while we're on the topic of this. And maybe you never thought about this, so <laughs> good time to think about this now. And I'll start going through questions while that's up. <laughs> Scott says you can't see Cyber Days in Oklahoma. Yeah, I imagine Oklahoma I got a pretty good one. Uh, when is the next meetup? Yes, the next meetup is going to be, let me get my calendar up so I have the right days. Because apparently I can't count. <laughs> it will be, I have this actually, where it is? I'm just going to have to look it up. It's always the first Thursday of the first full week of the Thursday. Gosh darn it, I can't click anywhere today. Uh, I should be more prepared on this. <laughs> Hold on, Scott, I'll give you the <coughs> answer in just a second. April 9th. That is the next meetup. Uh, turnaround from Amazon review for your first, uh, Robert is commenting that the turnaround from Amazon to review your app is one day, so much better than Apple. So that's good to hear. Uh, Francis comments, the Fire TV seems like an interesting new market. Thanks for the updates, upcoming updates. Uh, iOS, Scott's asking iOS controller support. Uh, yes, but I think uh, Windows is going to get uh, support for joysticks first. Um, so if you didn't know, we use uh, my cross-platform open source library called FreeStick. Uh, it doesn't currently have iOS support in it. If I can find some free spare days at home to do that, I will. Um, but we kind of need Windows first. So Windows is going to get the treatment first and then uh, iOS. But yes, eventually, yes, it will get support. I do find to get support for that. Um, and let me close the poll here. So it looks like most of you guys are interested in doing um, Mac desktop with gamepads. So it sounds like joysticks is a good thing. Uh, a lot of people like it. So that's great. It's fantastic to hear. Um, <laughs> Scott's asking if we get spring break off. Yeah, no, we don't get spring break off. <laughs> that's more of a university thing. <laughs> All right, last round for any more questions. And I'm probably gonna head, we're going to probably close this down. You guys, like one minute or so. Any last minute questions? Scott's asking about sprite sheets. So Brian here can go into a little bit about how the new rendering in system kind of does some of that for you. Yeah, um, the, the new sprite system that's in the nightly build. Which is 14. 14. Um, it automatically rips up uh, all the artwork you give it um, into um, 64 by 64 pixel tiles. And then officially loads those into into uh, one of four mega textures. So um, it's constantly streaming these tiles down into memory. So you basically get uh, sprite sheets free. Uh, it doesn't matter if you put it in a sheet or if you put it as individual objects. It it wouldn't matter. So there isn't there isn't support for importing sprite sheets. But you can, but you can do things with your art to make your art more sprite sheet friendly or automatic sprite yeah, sheet friendly. Yeah, the biggest the biggest thing for performance of the new system is 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 duplicating those tiles as much as you can. So authoring, just like it was in the Super Nintendo days, 
where everything was built out of 8x8 characters and then you duplicate those all over the place and you only had so much tile memory. Um, it's the same now um, with the new game Salad Engine. Um, so if you, if you want, had a 2048 by 2048 image uh, that was all white, um, that would just get reduced down to one tile if it was all exactly white. If it was a gradation of white, then it would create thousands of tiles. Uh, so it's best to just like create tiles and stamp them all over the place to to get your best you know, best optimization. Yeah. So ideally, if you had a giant blue background that was like 20, 000, 2,000 by 2,000, and it was entirely the same color, our system would make that go down to a 64 by 64 mm -hmm. square. And so you get the size of that, but you only be eating the memory of a 64 by 64. So it's good to composite things. So if you have like a background where most of your most of the area is one color, you should separate that as one actor and then put the other actors in as separate pieces. So we only have so we can take that big blue image and make a 64 by 64 square and tile that for you already. And that way you don't have to eat the memory cost of the giant image. Uh, Francis asks uh, or Francis asks if uh, Mac 14 and Windows 14 files be compatible. Yes, they'll be 100 percent compatible. That is part of the point. We're trying to get both these out at the same time. So if you're on Mac and Windows, it doesn't matter. You can get access to all the features and you can switch between the two. Yes, they will be compatible. Uh, Scott asks, is texture packing already done in Game Salad and are there any plans uh, to support it? What do you mean by texture packing? Can you be a little more specific on which version of time texture packing you're talking about? Are you talking about how to pack um, uh, images efficiently on textures? We do that automatically for you. Uh, yeah, he's asking about whether as long as they're authored on 64 by 64 boundaries. If you had a, a, a giant sprite sheet, a, a, gi a giant image that had um, an image in the middle and all the background was exactly white, then there'd be one tile for all the white and then multiple tiles for the image inside it. So it would pack really efficiently, automatically for you. So yes, uh, is your answer yes? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what Ed's asking here. I had a bug request regarding an issue related to this. Sample PSD was attached, but it wasn't downloaded. Could we get that PSD post on the forums? Which PSD? Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Let me go look up what this is. Oh, we probably just need to test this again. <coughs> um, yeah, we'll go look into this. Image is not loading. There's our image is not loading smoothly. Oh, is this? And was yours a game that had the hand painted art? It looked like um, you know that game with the hand painted art we were looking at. Mm. Um, there was one game we had in that we were trying to speed up image loading, and it was because the art was all hand painted. We couldn't tile it up, and so you were constantly thrashing loading off disk. Um, and so that art, if it was broken up into smaller pieces and it could be replicated better, it would work better in the engine. Um, I will have to review this bug. I'm not as familiar with this. Oh, this is where. Let's see. Um, did you on this one? Did you uh, put it? Oh, okay. Yes. Somehow your attachment didn't get up there. Yes, Ed. We'll fix that. Um, let me see if I can just do it here real quick. Uh, yes, Ed. I can show it to you right now. Uh, copy link. Here we go. Try that out Ed, and see if that works for you. Okay, I just sent the uh, PSD. Um, yeah, I don't know why the PSD won't show up for everybody. Um, yeah, I'll double check that it's viewable out externally, but I sent you a link, so I hope you can get it from there. Uh, will there be a best practice guide on how to step your uh, art best integrated? Yes, um, Francis. Yes, we will uh, post a whole entire write-up when this goes out on how to best do it. Um, there was uh, a game style meetup last year that Brian did about about the new rendering system and how to do it. Um, but mostly, most of it's going to involve you staying on the 64 by 64 area and trying to make um, your art as tileable as possible. <coughs> so if you have a really large image, Think about is 
could I break this up into 64 by 64 tiles and how many could I break it up by? And we break it up by uh, repeating color or what's the uh, exact match? Exact match. So we take your we take your take 64 bit chunks of your image and if they match 100%, we throw away and keep the original. So if that's how you how you think about your art, can I can this art be squashed down to a few set of tiles that are duplicates? So like if I paint a big squash of red up here in the corner and a big squash of blue down here, then these big blue and red areas will be crunched down to smaller tile sets. And where they are together, you'll have more tile sets. So think about that way. So ideally, if you composite all your art, like in Photoshop, letting us composite it would actually probably give you better speed because we'd be able to um, take those big, large pieces you're compositing and rip all them down to small pieces. Um, the only kind of subset on that is if you have like a gradient. Gradients would be kind of difficult to uh, tile out. Yeah. You kind of want to minimize the gradients. Okay, Ed got his stuff going. Okay, great. Um, system background for pausing a game coming up on the on an app closing. Can you be more specific on that, Scott? It's a little little generalistic there. You're talking about like iOS or Android. Uh, what kind of pausing? Uh, what kind of problem, problems are you seeing now? Background pausing a game on closing on iOS. Oh, I think we had. You might try the Hibernate. I was looking in the engine. There's a Hibernate. That Hibernate event. Um, let me find it real quick. Is it Hibernate. Let me share my screen here real quick. I was looking at it, and I'm pretty sure this is in there on iOS. This Hibernate, so that when the app goes in the background, you should get this call. If you don't iOS, it's an easy thing for us to add. And there's supposed to be a resume. I don't see it in here. Yeah, so an active hibernate, you can do something when he goes in the background. Is that, is that what you're asking, Scott? Pardon me. Okay. Yeah, try that. If that hibernate doesn't work, let me know and I'll fix it in iOS. It should work, though. I saw the code in there. Yeah, I do want to have the hibernate work for all these systems. I know it works in Android real well. We, we made sure it worked in Android well. Um, but I remember the code being in iOS, so. But I have no problems adding it if it doesn't work. It should be simple enough. Uh, okay, I'll double check Ed. Your Ed's talking about the forum thread that was about uh, tables. Um, and I just haven't kept up with it. It may be an issue where we just need to get a bug in there. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I would say let's just get a bug in there. Let's get a feature request in there, how you guys want it, and we can talk about it on the bug or in the feature request uh, if there's not one already in there. Um, that would probably be the easiest way to go that direction. <laughs> All right. See you later, Scott. All right. Any last questions? Otherwise, I think we're probably ready to, to end this. Going once, going twice. Okay, I think we're done. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming to the meetup. Um, I don't have a topic for next week, so I am totally up for somebody who wants to suggest a topic or has a burning topic they want to talk about or present on. Um, otherwise, you're probably going to hear me figure out something. Um, but, but you guys can always present. I love having guys, you guys help present because this is a community building thing, and um, I enjoy hearing what you guys have to show and showcase and uh, other users. It's not just us showcasing stuff. It's you guys showcasing stuff, too. So if you got an idea or um, you have a, a topic you want to talk about, let me know. All right, guys, take care, uh, and see you next month.